everyone knows what is the meaning of accountability and everyone understands that he or she will be held accountable and is accountable upon different levels. The initial level as you are born and you grow a little bit older, you feel accountable, but you might not realize the exact extent of that accountability to the degree that you think it's only to your parents. And then you are worried about your mother, you are worried about what your father's going to think and so on. And as you grow older, you realize the link that you have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fact that the ultimate accountability is for Allah and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as we grow older, we know that we might employ someone or we might be employed. If you're employed or you employ someone or you are doing business or interacting with people, there is a sense of accountability to the degree that you know, if I were to do my job correctly, I will be rewarded for it and I am deserving of the amount I'm getting. And if I were not to do my job correctly, then it means that I am at fault. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So much so that I recall one of the scholars back in Saudi Arabia many years ago who was warning those who waste time at the workplace reading the paper. At that time there was no surfing the net, but I think the problem has just become worse because of the internet and the phone. Reading the newspaper and drinking tea without doing the job that the salary you actually have should be deducted proportionately and returned to the person who did not give you as part of the contract of job the time to sit and read a newspaper. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us when it comes to accountability. However, the ultimate account shall be taken on the day of judgment. Allahu Akbar. On that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to set up some scales. The scales of justice as are mentioned in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well as in the Quran. Let's take a look at the verse of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says towards the end of, I think it's Surah Al-Anbiya. وَنَضَعُ الْمَوَازِينَ الْقِسْطَ لِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ فَلَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا وَإِن كَانَ مِثْقَالَ حَبَّةٍ مِّنْ خَرْدَلٍ أَتَيْنَا بِهَا وَكَفَى بِنَا حَاسِبِينَ On the day of judgment, we shall place the scales of justice to weigh the right and the wrong, your good deeds and your bad deeds. Allah says we will weigh them. We will weigh them. When your good is more than the bad, good news to you. When your bad is more than the good, bad news for you. May Allah grant us forgiveness through His mercy. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks of this very clearly. And he says very, very beautifully, If you want your bad deed to be wiped out, you need to follow it up very quickly with lots of good deeds so that they can be heavier on the scale and remember to treat people with good character. No matter what your difference is with someone, speak politely, speak with respect, speak with humbleness and humility. It will help you on that day. The reason is today when we buy some fruit, we weigh it in grams and kilograms. When we want to buy internet, we weigh it in megabytes and gigabytes. When we perhaps would like to have space on our phones, we measure, we measure it also in gigabytes, etc. Allah knows what type of weight He is going to use on the day of Qiyamah. He will have His own way of weigh, weighing it. When we were young, we used to think, how is Allah going to weigh our deeds? When we hear of the books that are written by the angels and we start thinking, I was born in 1970 something, or I was born in 13, say for example, 1395 Hijri. And what happened between then and now, how can it be registered in a book? I promise you, my brothers, my sisters, as time has passed, we come to realize that it requires not even the size of your nail, not even the size of the part of the nail that you cut out to actually bring together terabytes of information and data. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Allahu Akbar. You have 20,000 complete libraries of books in a small little dot. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Don't you think as time passes, it's going to become more sophisticated? Today, they've got something called the cloud, where you upload whatever you want. You don't have it actually in reality, but you can download it anytime you need it. Do you not think that it has been all uploaded into the cloud of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Subhana rabbi al-a'la. Every image you save on your phone, you have an option to actually upload it. It's uploaded to where? The cloud. Don't you think whatever you saw, whatever you heard, whatever you spoke about, all your dealings, everything was already uploaded into the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Allah says, we will place the scales of justice on that day. Justice shall be served. Who was right? Who was wrong? What was right? What was wrong? What you did? What you did not do? Etc. Etc. We know absolutely everything. What you were accused of and what happened in reality. Allah says, "Fala tudlamu nafsun shay'a." Nobody will be oppressed on that day, even a little bit. Even a little bit. There's no oppression on that day. And Allah says, "Wa in kana mithqala habbatin min khardal atayna biha." Even if it is the size of the mustard seed, we will bring it. We will bring it forth. Even if it is a small thing that no one notices, Allah says, we will bring it. Do you know why? And I want to tell you a reality. We don't know sometimes what we say or do, the weight of it. Sometimes you might make two, root, two units of prayer, salah. I read two units of salah. Maybe it weighed something very light because my intention was contaminated. So when your intention is pure and proper and 100% and your concentration is similar, your reward is huge. Perhaps so many, what can I call them? Spiritual bites, okay? Spiral bites. Let's make a word up, okay? So here there's terabytes and whatever else. These are spiral bites. So you have, say for example, 10,000 spiral bites for two units of prayer that are read correctly. How many of us have 100% concentration in salah? Nobody, not even the imam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. We try our best. But that is why whenever you have finished a deed, you say, Oh Allah, I tried. I ask you to accept it. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. Oh Allah, accept this deed that we've done. Accept them from us or this deed from us. For indeed, you are all hearing, all knowing. You know exactly what happened. I tried my best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance. So the thing is, you don't know the weight. So sometimes when you think you did a bad deed and you think it's light, in the eyes of Allah, it is heavy. I give you an example. When you accuse someone of something they did not do, Allah says in Surah An-Nur, You think it's very light. You think it's something that you can actually get away with. Yet in the eyes of Allah, it is a huge, huge, huge sin that you have perpetrated. So this goes to show us this, the, the weight of the deeds actually is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much your bad deed weighs is known by Allah. How much your good deed weighs is known by Allah. Therefore, we constantly seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we go back to the very interesting question that I raised a little bit earlier. How it is mind boggling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. What happened from the day you achieved maturity or puberty is absolutely totally recorded for you or against you. And what happened before that is recorded, but it's not for you or against you because the pen was lifted. When it comes to responsibility, the pen is lifted on three occasions. The hadith says, The pen is lifted upon three types of people. One who is sleeping until he wakes up. What you see in your dream, what you've done in your sleep, you are not accountable for it. Subhanallah. Secondly, the one who is not in his mind until he comes to his right frame of mind. And thirdly, the one who is a child until he reaches the age of puberty or she, then it is held against you. You haven't read Salah when you were a baby. Allah is not going to ask you, but you achieved maturity, puberty, responsibility. You are in the right frame of mind and you're not asleep. It is held against you. This is why those who have overslept a Salah without a doing of their own, the Hadith says, no problem. 
it is wrong, but you can always do qada and Allah will forgive you. Man nama an salatin aw nasiyaha fal yusalliha idha dhakaraha. Whoever sleeps over a prayer by mistake, not someone who calculated it. You know what calculate means? I know that Fajr, for example, sunrise is at 5.50, for example, today. And I know that, uh, you know what, I need to read Salatul Fajr. But I say, look, for Fajr, Allah will wake me up. As for work, I will wake myself up. Subhanallah. So you put your clock at quarter past six, six o'clock, 10 minutes after the time, then you are guilty. That doesn't mean, okay, I slept over the Salah and the Hadith says, if you're sleeping, you're forgiven. No, you planned to sleep. Therefore, you are guilty and responsible. You need to make an effort. My brothers and sisters, it's a matter of 10 minutes or half an hour. It's a matter of maximum one hour. So can we not do that for the sake of Allah? The hadith says, al-fajri khayrun min dunya wa ma fiha. The two units of sunnah, of, of fajr salah, prior to the farad, they are better for you than the whole dunya and whatever is in it. Subhanallah. Today a small deal, we want it. Especially when the bond notes are being converted at a good rate, we run. Why? Subhanallah, I'm gaining my money. But when it comes to the becoming a person who is freed by Allah, Allah says the whole world and what it has, Wallahi, better than that are the two units of sunnah of Salatul Fajr. And that reward is for the one who gets up early. They make wudu with enthusiasm. They look forward to standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have a reward for the entire dunya and whatever it holds just in two units of Salah. May Allah make us regular with Salatul Fajr and we come and get up early so that we can fulfill those two units in a beautiful way. Look at the weight. The weight of two units is not the same when it comes to Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib and Isha. Fajr is much more heavier. Why? It required a bigger effort than any other Salah. That's the reason. Allah says, I don't reward you equally for that which is easy and that which is hard. That which is hard, you get a bigger reward. When there is a sin in front of you and you know it is so easy to commit this sin, subhanallah. But you just say, Inni Allah, I fear Allah. I'm not going to do this. Allah says, for you is a far bigger reward, far bigger reward than the one who the sin was not in front of him. He went out looking for it. Subhanallah. You find that? Because one is when the sin is easy to commit and you stayed away from it, it shows that you truly fear Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So this is why Allah describes in the Quran a verse that really makes our hair stand. If you know the meaning of the Arabic, it is more powerful than any translation could ever, ever render. وَوُضِعَ الْكِتَابُ فَتَرَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ وَيَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَتَنَا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا الله أكبر الله says on the day of judgment, the book your, that you authored yourself will be brought in front of you. My book, your book, who is writing it? I am writing it, you are writing it in the sense that it's my deeds and your deeds, not a third person's deeds. It's your deeds. So write your book correctly. When you are authoring a book, you don't want there to be English language mistakes. You do want someone else to check it, someone to edit it, someone to do something. Wallahi, my brothers, my sisters, make sure that you understand the most important book that you will ever, ever, ever receive in the Akhirah. In the dunya, it's the Quran. We don't have a doubt. In the Akhirah, it is your book of deeds, which you wrote yourself. And you cannot deny it. The Quran tells us that the the, the, the mujrimeen, those who are criminals, who are the criminals? The criminals are those who did not do tawbah. They are criminals. The criminals are those who did not do tawbah. 
Because the hadith tells us if you did tawbah, we will wipe out your deeds. Tawbah actually when you seek forgiveness and repentance and you ask Allah's forgiveness sincerely, your sins are wiped out no matter what you've done. Subhanallah. So what you did, you wrote a wrong paragraph, you wrote a wrong chapter. Allah tells you if you are alive and you are breathing, you can delete it and nobody will know about it. We will make the angels also forget about it. So this is Allah. But we have a chance now, my brothers and sisters. Wallahi, we need to author the book well. So when the mujrim, a criminal who did not seek the forgiveness of Allah, you know, you and I, when we are driving, we are sitting. We're not talking. Sometimes you might be on the phone, but generally, when you're lying down, when you're doing something, move your tongue. Move your tongue. With what? With the dhikr of Allah. Remember Allah. This tongue, if you don't occupy it with good, it will occupy you with bad. Remember that. Occupy your tongue with goodness because wallahi you don't know the weight of those good words that you utter. Kalimatani khafifatani ala lisani thaqilatani fil mizan habibatani ila rahman subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanallahi al azim. These two words, Allah says, they are two light words, very light on the tongue, very loved by Allah, very heavy on the scale. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al azim. How many of us say these words? How many of us would say it right here, right now? Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al azim. May Allah write it for us. Wallahi, like I told you, you don't know the weight of the deeds. Allah tells you this dhikr to remember me and to praise me is very, very heavy. You will be happy. You will see 10 million spirobites just for one small word that you uttered. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those. So the mujrim will say on that day and will be worried. Worried meaning they know they've done bad deeds. Now they're waiting for the results. When you were lazy and you wrote your examinations, you are worried, worried about results when they come and you don't want the results to be published in the public so that everybody can see that you failed. You want them quietly. You might go there and try and erase it if you have all used, subhanallah. By the way, in Shona, the you, some of the people actually when they were trying to explain to their unlettered parents what the you means, they said it means unogona. You know what that means? That means you know, you know very well, subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. The Zimbabweans will understand what I've said there. So my brothers and sisters, it doesn't work like that on the day of judgment. Allah says these mujrimeen and the criminals, they will actually be worried. Worried about what? About what's going to be in the book. And then when they see it, they will say, Ya wa'ilatana, destruction to us. Oh no. That's how we would word it, right? Why? What's wrong with this book? What is it with this book? Every small thing is in it. And the big thing is also in it. Things that you and I would have forgotten, they will be in the book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah grant us ease. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the criminals will say, what is it with this book? It hasn't left anything. And Allah says, it's your deeds. You find them in front of you. They will be present and they are there. Nothing you do, nowhere you go, no what, nothing you've seen or uttered or dealt with, etc., etc. Every movement of yours is recorded. It's your book. You cannot deny it. You cannot deny it. I want to draw your attention to something. You see, this mobile phone that we have today, if you go and search what Google knows about you, Google knows about you more than you know about yourself because you have a factor known as forgetfulness. You might forget what you've done, but Google knows more than you. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, if you want to have a glimpse into 0.001% of what Allah knows about you, just go now today to Google. They call him Sheikh Google, but let's not call him Sheikh. But if you go to this person or this I'm saying person, if you go to this uh, site and you try and search what they know about you, Wallahi, your smartphone records absolutely everything, including your image, including where you went, how long you spent there, what you said there. It is all encrypted. It's in your phone. If you think I'm telling you a lie, you are living in the past. It is a fact and a reality. You have a smartphone, your face is taken 24 7 whenever they want it it's there 
you phoned someone, they know it's you. You sent a message, they know it's you because they have the time log and the voice log and the audio log and the video log. It's all there. Right now I'm speaking, my phone hears everything. Those of you who have Android, all you need to say is go Google in your own voice. And Google will say, how can I help you? Or some other term. If you have an iPhone, you call it Siri, for example. It hears you, it will respond, it will do everything for you. And you think Allah does not know. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. I was looking at the log. One brother was showing me about a log of a person. He says, look, I show you where you've been, how long you spent there, what you've said. There is a light recording of it on your phone. That is why what they do, the people who are the inventors of these phones, when they get their phone, they open the phone, they clip out the microphones and they disconnect the video and they use an external earpiece. And when they are asked why you do this, they say so that no one can hear and see. What do we have to hide? We are Muslimin. We should have nothing to hide, subhanAllah. Where you went, what you did, how long you went there for, what you said. The, the thing they are now trying to get at, Wallahi, is your thoughts. Your thoughts. If you have browsed through something, they start looking at your thought process, how you are thinking. Every day you're looking at this, you're looking at that. If you're talking about something, your phone will offer you the offers connected to what you were saying. If you're talking about the train ticket prices from Manchester to London, a little while later you will see on your phone, they will offer you tickets from Manchester to London. How does the phone know? Wallahi wa rabbil bayt. It has studied what you have said because you said it and it knows you want to go there. And it's all interconnected, interlinked. Now you want to know Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, the one who made you and I, do you really think he does not know where you went, what you did, what you said, what you didn't say, when you lied, when you told the truth, when you stole, when you ate, when you committed adultery, when you did bad, and when you did good as well. When you did good as well, subhanallah, Allah knows. But I want to give you the good news. Tawbah will delete your entire, entire sin completely. Seek the forgiveness of Allah. Repentance will wipe it out. And I can tell you something else. Your phones you have, you can restore factory settings, you can do whatever you want, they can get it back. They can get back the encrypted version of everything that was on that phone from the beginning to the end. But when it comes to Allah, Allah says, we will do you a favor. Man is not Ghafoorur Rahim. We are Ghafoorur Rahim. We will forgive you in such a way that it will be wiped out, no one will know. So my brothers and sisters, today, I want to encourage you and I to turn back to Allah. Every day seek the forgiveness of Allah. No matter what you've done, no matter whatever has happened in your life, don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Allah loves you enough that today you are seated in His house, His own house. Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. May Allah grant us that accountability. May Allah make us from those who realizes that He definitely knows absolutely everything. You cannot hide from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is still a lot to be said in this particular topic, but inshallah we'll leave it for another occasion. Okay.